Yeah. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone. Uh, and I think let me share my screen. Yeah. Okay. I think you can see it. Uh, okay. So let's have some discussion about uh, how to use AI in order to make uh, uh, like predictions or explorations. Extrapolations, sorry, extrapolations. So, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please uh, make sure to raise them. Uh, before that, I think let me check uh, if my audio is. Uh, can you guys hear, hear me? Okay, good. Yeah, so uh, let's start from why, why we use AI for making predictions so we simply have two uh, like bullet points two major re reasons that we use ai for prediction the first one is simplicity so normally uh, as a uh, like my uh, as a machine learning engineer or as a data scientist uh, or data analyst i believe uh, to, to say the least you're gonna need to have some coding skills in order to predict uh the future by uh, by depending on the past patterns or the past data that's already at hand so what ai does is uh it, it simply reduces this effort um so the first thing uh, that's the for uh, the answer for the why is simplicity so no coding or no technical knowledge is required when trying to uh, make a prediction by using AI. And the second thing is flexibility. So you can use, uh, you, you can be used to a variety of prediction tasks. So you, you can use it for financial for, for forecasting, uh, which is uh, what we are going to do for this week. And you can also use it for sales prediction. Of course, um, so uh, even though you are not going to be required to know any coding or having any technical knowledge in order to uh, predict by using AI, uh, still uh, the prediction is not always perfect. So you need to, to take that into consideration. So how, how does it work? So uh, any prediction uh, that's made is based on analyzing the pattern uh, from the historical data that we have provided. So uh, we provide the AI with historical data that's uh, that's related to the prediction that we want we want to make. For instance, if we give it uh, the historical data for, let's say, the sales of the company for the past three years, and ask it for to generate uh, the sales for the next year, it's going to find a pattern, some kind of pattern, no matter how big or small it may be. It's going to look for a pattern in that uh, in that data, and it's going to uh, like uh, provide you uh, with a prediction um, depending on the pattern. Yeah. So, uh, how can we uh, make a prediction by using ChatGPT or any AI? Actually, it's not limited to ChatGPT. So, the first step is to define our prediction goal. So, we need to specify what we are trying to predict is its revenue is it sales is it uh the number of patients in a hospital or so on and so forth you have to uh, specify the uh like the purpose or the goal of that prediction so for example predict the monthly revenue of our business in 2025 is an example prompt so the next thing that you need to do is gather the inputs uh, and input relevant data so this includes uh key data points such as past financial records so if you are trying to predict the revenue for the coming year you need to uh, you, you need to provide the ai with uh, past revenue data uh, and the current market trends if that's available so for instance based on the following revenue data for 2023 and uh, 2024 predict the revenue for 2025 so the first thing is you need to uh, like specify the objective or the goal. The second thing is you need to 
uh, gather and input the relevant data. And the third is, as I have said, uh, it's not perfect. Actually, any prediction, any type of prediction, not only limited to AI, any type of prediction that you make is not per perfect. So you need to always review and interpret the prediction. So you need to understand the output given by ChatGPT. So uh, as I have said, uh, it's not limited to ChatGPT. You can use any AI. So you need to interpret the prediction and uh, consider different scenarios. So even after you make the prediction, you can prompt it to make another prediction by uh, giving it different scenarios. We will see how we are going to resolve this one. So, what are the best practices for using uh, AI for prediction? So, the first one is uh, providing a clear and specific prompt. So, this is not only limited to predictions. This is actually a general a general uh, thing that you need to consider when working with AI. You need to provide a more concise and on the uh, on point uh, prompts. For instance, uh, what will our sales be? And instead of saying that, you uh, need to ask, predict our monthly uh, sales for 2025 based on the following data, and then you will uh, provide the relevant data. So in, instead of uh, going, going for the shortest, but yet uh, a more confusing prompt, try to be more specific and clear. So the next thing is using recent and relevant data. So uh, we need to make sure that the data we provide is up to date and relevant to make the prediction. So include the recent sales, trends, economic conditions, and so on and so on. And then the final thing is review and cross-check the prediction. So as I've said, uh, AI is not perfect. Actually, any pre pre prediction is not perfect. So uh, you need to validate uh, the prediction with the real world, the real world, and uh, uh, like have an expert's op opinion. So, uh, so what are the limitations and considerations? So, uh, ChatGPT or AI in a generic way are not perfect and may not always provide the right or the accurate predictions, especially when uh, the scenarios become complex, making it harder and harder to find a pattern uh, between the, or inside the, the data provided. So the next thing is ethical consideration. So uh, I believe in some countries, there are some ethical implications for using AI for decision making. So you need to uh, you need to make uh, the party that's going to be affected by this prediction aware that it's, uh, these implications or this prediction is made by AI uh, before ma making uh, before they making the decision. And the final uh, and of course uh, combining AI with human ju judgment is always a good way to go. So always combine the insights from AI uh, with your own understanding and expertise for better results. So uh, make sure that always, almost always, uh, AI is not perfect and you need it to guide it into the right path. Yeah, so the slide is uh, pretty much short. Uh, um, so any questions, guys? So far on the uh, slides, do you have any questions before we move to the um, examples? Okay, I'm like, uh, you guys can hear me, right? Okay, so I guess there is no question there. Okay. So let's go to, uh, so for this example, I'm going to use ChatGPT. Okay, thank you, Shirat. Uh, I'm going to use ChatGPT. Um, so, uh, let me just,
Yeah. Yeah, I can okay, see so your uh, slide. So can you share with us again? You can't see. So we, we just fi finished. Sorry. Oh, I will, I will. When the session I mean, ends, the I will one, share, share it on the... Oh, you mean this one? So we haven't started. Okay, so can you see? You you guys can, can, can see my screen, right? Okay. So here I have an example sales uh, sales data for 2022 up to 2024 for each month so th this is the sales for each month uh for a company right so uh, i want to predict the sales for the coming year which is 2025 so let's see how we go we are going to do this um so um Based on the following monthly uh, sales data from twenty, uh, I believe twenty twenty, yeah, twenty twenty uh, to twenty twenty four. Uh, please predict. the sales for the year 20. So consider the trends and patterns in the data provided below. And then uh, I think we can make this for And I'm just going to copy and paste this data here. So since it's, uh, uh, it will already know how to de delaminate the data. So, I think it's taking a bit of time. I think it might be because, oh, yeah, so it's. Uh, it made the table, so this is why I like to use ChatGPT. So it's already provided the table, the data into a, in a table for, format for each month, and so on and so on. And here, if you want uh, the code, so it's a Python code. So it used a linear model, which is a linear regression. So if you don't know what what it is, it's okay. So here we have the year. Um, so and so on and so on so th this is uh, a dictionary yeah so it made it's it just showing us how it made the prediction so and the result yeah so uh let's try to change some scenarios so uh, uh we are planning Increase the uh, number of cells uh, by uh, ten percent starting from dollar adjust the uh, prediction is for this uh, yeah. 
So here it has adjusted the cells. So you can take a look at the data here, how it's changed. And here you can see how uh, it's affected. Yeah, and here, what if the increase was 15%? You can check for that one too. So I'm trying to change the scenarios and trying to predict based on that scenario. So yeah. So here it's going to predict for 15% instead of 10%. Um, yeah, and so on, yeah. That's uh, clear. Is it clear, guys? Is it clear? Okay. Good. So any key, any questions that you have so far? Uh, okay. If there is no question, I believe we can wrap up the session. Let me just yes, Bernard. Bernard, you can speak. Okay, thank you. I don't know if if I can, you could hear me now. Yes, we can. I think you are on mute. Okay, all right. So, um, thank you uh, for the presentation. Um, I just want a quick one. So, uh, assuming that let's say it's a new startup, and then um, you've not made any sales uh, for the period, you just need to make the the, the projections right from the start. Um, um, how do you go around it to, to make the right the projection? And also, um, assuming that you have this, and uh, how do you make uh, analysis out of it? And how do you compare to ensure that the projection and the analysis that the uh, AI has given you um, is the exact thing? Because a um, um, couple of days back, I was trying to uh, use AI to extract uh, data on the election trend in my region and i realized that i use uh different llms um there were variations and i also tried to do a uh, human search so i i went on online on the web to get document to see analysis of elections uh, after the period i was looking for and i realized that the feedback uh for me the two platforms were different from also from the the human outcome so how do you go around it to ensure that the result that you've gotten is actual, so it doesn't appear embarrassing. Because if I had gone ahead to use uh, the data from AI, it would have been very embarrassing if people read what I was looking out for. Yes, yes, exactly. So that's the wonderful question. Thank you for asking, Bernard. Uh, so as I was mentioning, so the first thing, the first question, if uh, I believe was, if your company was a startup and you don't have any historical data that you uh, are going to provide for the LLM, how are you going to provide, uh, or how are you going to make that uh, picture, right? Yes, exactly. Yes, so uh, in that case, what you can do is, uh, uh, so, uh, we have had something called the market, right? So, uh, if even if you are a startup, you are not uh, only in the first company uh, that's doing that, right? It's a start it's a startup for you, but uh, it's already being worked uh, somewhere. So, one of the trends that you can do, or one of the strategies that you can follow in this case, is uh, using the data pro uh, like the market or from other companies that are currently doing the same thing or similar things that you are doing. So uh, even when starts stating the, or even when coming was with the price, I believe we have a, a project on that one too. So even when you are try, trying to calculate the price, you are, when you are new, you are going to look at the market and what they are doing, their sales and, and so on and so on. And, come up with a price, right? So the same thing, you are going to do the same thing here. So uh, based on the market, based on the past uh, sales they have, or based on the data that's already available, you can make the prediction. But it's, it's really hard for startups to do this because uh, 
this data are not available easily. Uh, companies are not willing to uh, give them up easily. So yeah, there is a big gap there, but that's one thing that you can't. The other thing that you can do is uh, consult an expert, and uh, they will give you a prediction uh, based on their expertise. Uh, and for the second question, yeah. So as uh, we have been trying to say, uh, start from the starting of the training, AI is not perfect. Like AI, I think their hype for AI is much, much more scary than AI itself. Okay. AI does a, a lot of mistakes. It has a lot of mistakes. It has a lot of uh, wrongdoings. So as you have seen, uh, such things could happen. So one thing that you can do is, uh, you have to know, you have to have some kind of knowledge in that area. That's my, my first opinion. So the first thing that I would say is uh, make sure that you have some kind of knowledge in that area. So if you are new about uh, like the elections and uh, I'm sorry if I missed your example, but if you are new to that kind of analysis, it's going to be hard. So that's why here uh, we said on the last slide, we said uh, you need to always uh, uh, like consult expertise uh, for better, better results. So you, you need to talk to result, the experts and show them your prediction before uh, going out uh, to the public with your results. So one way you can not avoid but minimize uh, minimize this error is by specifying the kind of data that you want the AI to, to use and the kind of tools or the kind of uh, like the paths that you want it to use. So here, for instance, here um, for the prediction, it's uh, sorry, not here. This one. So here, it used uh, the linear, I believe. Uh, okay, sorry, not this one. So here. So here, uh, I don't think many people here are technical, but I will just explain. Try to explain. So here, uh, it's using the linear regression model. So it's a linear model. So it's. Uh, one of the simplest model that you used in order to make predictions. So definitely there could be some errors here. So if you want uh, to have a better result, you might need to specify the model that you want it to, to use. It might be the forest method. Uh, so uh, we have XGB model and so on and so on. So I don't want to confuse you with that one, but uh, you need to specify the model. So, but in order to do that, as I've said earlier, you need to uh, either consult expertise or have some kind of knowledge in that area. But for simple predictions, uh, you can do this and consult and go and consult expertise. Is that clear? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Kasa? Okay, thank you. <clears throat> As you show us, I think the uh, UTP or they are using the linear regressionist. Maybe, uh, as you show us the arbitrary example, even we can't find the prediction positive outputs. Uh, maybe my question is: is there is there any possibility to get a negative outcomes or maybe risk prediction like that ones? Can we get like this from I? Uh, I'm sorry. Are you talk, talk, I'm sorry. I didn't get you quite question. Are you talk, talking about the error? Kind of yeah, get about error. errors. About errors. The risk is okay. that we can get the possibility of negative outcomes. Maybe when we say prediction, prediction is the next years of our cell like that one. So, is there any yes. possibility yes. to predict negative outcome like that one? Uh, I didn't understand the negative outcomes, uh, but okay, can, can you explain that one, please? Maybe when we say negative outcomes, for example, we expect our sale to be increased in the next years, yeah? Oh, okay, so what's the, the How about possibility that... Like that oh, one, yeah. okay, so, but uh, that's not going, going to work for sales, so this is for the sales. 
So we are trying to predict for sales, right? So here we said it's a sales. So sales cannot be negative. It could be zero, but it cannot be negative. So if we talk about uh, profit, yes, uh, it could go. So I think it's better to do it for, uh, let's try to do it for, Okay, let's try to do for the uh, profit. Okay. Uh, consider it as a, okay. It's, okay, uh, first let's make the, uh, like, the prediction and then we're gonna ask it the scenario that uh, we're gonna have a loss. So that's your question, right? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So yes, we yeah. cannot do, do that for the sales. So let's make it for pre prediction Is it for the profits. Uh, okay. Okay, we have so it's slightly close to zero zero. So it's based on the trends that we have provided, it's close to zero. But if there was a loss, so here the sale is already growing every year. So it's growing by a hundred dollars every year. So there is less uh, priority. So it depends on it depends on what we are going to give the input, yeah. Yes. As you said, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just a pattern. So it's trying to find the pattern. It's not going to uh, like uh, look look into other data. So. It's going to just look at the pattern and try to decide whether or not uh, we are going to use. But here, since the beta here is already uh, in a rise or it's already just showing profits, it's just pre predicting that there is not going to be a loss. Thank That's, you so much. Yeah. So maybe let's give it a, a scenario where the sales uh, is reduced to like ten percent each month. So, so here, like we decreased by 10, 10 months, uh, ten percent each month, we still would not get a loss by ten things. So you can just change the scenarios. But, uh, Thank you for the question. So Shirak, uh, I just went through, uh, for Shirak and Tony, I just went through what we did earlier. 
just for you guys to have understanding. So did you get, get uh, the example? She tracked it. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we are set then. Any other questions before we close the session? Okay. I guess that's uh, that's a no. So let me just. Uh, Thank you.